Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're all healthy, safe and of course doing great today. After watching this video, you'll know the exact difference between the duties and responsibilities of a captain, first officer and second officer. You'll know the one and only answer to the question, who is the real pilot? And if you think you know it all, I will include some information which you probably did not know. I will also explain the differences between the duties of a pilot flying and pilot monitoring. If you like my videos and feel like supporting this channel, please leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out any of my future videos. You can also support this channel by becoming a patron. Patrons receive all kinds of benefits, for example, these sorts of exclusive videos. The link is in the description box below. First, a short history lesson. Back in the day, long-haul airplanes like the MD-10, MD-11, Boeing 747, etc. came with an additional flight crew member. It wasn't a pilot, it was a flight engineer. The flight engineer was able to monitor and control a number of systems from within the cockpit. A dedicated workstation was fitted directly behind the pilots. The flight engineer was supposed to know the ins and outs of all systems on board and assisted the pilots in safely navigating from A to B. Nowadays you won't see them on commercial airplanes because the systems became so advanced that there was no longer a need for a separate set of eyes to monitor and control them. Fun fact, loads of flight engineers actually became pilots after their jobs slowly disappeared. Not all of them disappeared though. Flight engineers can still be found in the cockpit of military planes, for example. So who is part of the present day flight crew? On short haul flights, you will usually see two flight crew members, a captain and a first officer. And on long haul flights, it's common to see a captain, a first officer and a second officer. On extended long-haul flights, there can even be a fourth pilot, another first officer or a second officer. Another captain is also possible, but it is less common. So who is the boss if there are two captains, you might ask? I'll get back to you about that later in this video. To summarize, the basic flight crew consists of a captain who wears four stripes, a first officer who wears three stripes, and a second officer who wears two stripes. They all have their own seats in a cockpit so uh, let's continue with the fly deck seats. Who sits where? The left hand seat is occupied by the captain or a pilot under supervision being trained to become a captain. The right hand seat is occupied by the first officer or a pilot under supervision trained as a first officer or a right hand seat qualified captain. Generally speaking, you could say captain on the left, first officer on the right, but most of you guys probably already knew this. During taxi takeoff and the landing phase of long haul flights, another first officer or second officer is seated on the third seat. On extended long haul operations, there is even a additional crew member on a jump seat. The jump seat is an additional foldable or fixed seat in the cockpit. I hope all of this makes sense to you until now. So who is taking care of the plane? At some shady airlines, the first officer does literally everything during the entire day, performing the walk around, managing refueling process, um, performing the pre-flight, set up the plane, routing, dealing with passengers, everything you can think of. The captain simply arrives 10 minutes prior to departure and as soon as the airplane is above 10,000 feet, the captain takes out his or her newspaper. And I'm not even joking guys. So is this the case in the rest of the world? Absolutely not. Regulations ensure specific divisions in tasks between crew members. This is done in order to avoid situations like I just described, which deteriorates safety drastically. A multi-crew operation is therefore mandatory. Tasks are divided amongst the captain and first officer throughout a working day. Before the first flight of the day, the crew will discuss who is the pilot flying or pilot monitoring. Personally, I always try to be the pet flying on the first flight. In my opinion, it's the most fun leg because there, this is the one where uh, you fly away from your home base, which you have flown to already thousands of times. And on the flights towards gorgeous islands, small runways, exciting views or interesting procedures, you as a first officer want to be the pilot flying, right? So what does the pilot flying do and what does the pilot monitoring do? Let's start with the pilot flying. It's all in the name, really. The pilot flying actually flies the plane. He or she is supposed to um, prepare the plane for departure, think about entering data in the FMS, 
setting up MCP, giving a departure briefing, etc. Pilot flying is also taxiing the plane, taking off, flying it to the destination and landing it. While flying, the pilot flying controls the flight path, airspeed, configuration and navigation. Small disclaimer though, when the pilot flying is the first officer, he or she isn't always taxiing. This has to do with the tiller. It's a small steering wheel which is used to steer the plane while it's on the ground. A tiller isn't always installed on the first officer's side. And if it isn't installed, the captain becomes the pilot flying during taxi. Just before takeoff, the captain hands over the controls to the first officer, meaning the first officer becomes the pilot flying again and the captain pilot monitoring. Speaking of pilot monitoring, the pilot monitoring monitors the pilot flying, talks on the radio with air traffic control and fills in the paperwork or EFB. The general pilot monitoring responsibilities are reading a checklist, communications, monitoring, taxiing, flight path, airspeed, airplane configuration and navigation. The pilot monitoring is also responsible to complete tasks asked for by the pilot flying. For example, when flying manually or without autopilot, the pilot flying directs the pilot monitoring to make the changes on the MCP or mode control panel. The pilot flying and pilot monitoring duties can be changed during a flight to optimize workflow or because of company procedures. When a non-normal situation occurs, the crew could decide to swap the pilot flying and monitoring tasks to ensure the best possible outcome. You often see that the first officer will become the pilot flying because in that way the captain, can, um, the captain becomes the pilot monitoring, enabling him or her to properly manage the situation. Regardless of the pilot who is the pilot flying or pilot monitoring, the captain has the final authority for all dedicated and executed tasks. During a long-haul operation with more than two pilots operating the airplane, the pilot monitoring and pilot flying duties are usually tied to seats to avoid confusion. The pilots work in shifts and they can rest in either dedicated business class seats or overhead crew rest compartments, OCRs. That's the reason why you don't need to worry when you see pilots walking through the cabin. There are always two pilots flying the plane. Speaking of long-haul operation, let's talk a bit about the sponsor of today's video. NordVPN. NordVPN has sponsored this channel before and as you probably know I only advertise products and services that I personally believe in and I think that internet safety is becoming more important every day especially when you're traveling abroad so let me explain it to you guys last year I spent most of my time traveling and I might have stayed at over 200 different hotels but whether I stayed in a nice place like Tenerife or in England I never use the public Wi-Fi just to avoid any risks of being hacked or having my identity stolen. One of the best tips someone can give you when you're traveling is to get a proper VPN and this is where NordVPN comes in. They protect your data while traveling and in public places like airports and coffee shops. They also enable you to unlock Netflix, YouTube and your favorite entertainment websites while being away during layovers. I've been using their service for years now and I'm happy to announce that this video is brought to you by them, by NordVPN, which results in you receiving a 68% discount on their service. NordVPN was also selected as the best VPN in best VPN awards for 2020 and they are compatible with most operating systems like iOS, Android and Windows. I truly hope you will consider using a VPN and if you're interested in this offer go to nordvpn dbg and use the code dbg to get a 68% off a two-year plan plus an extra month free. The link is added in the description box below. So let's continue. Why do we use ranks in the aviation industry? What's the difference between a first officer and captain? Well, the captain or commander is the boss, the one everyone looks up to. The captain is usually the most experienced pilot in a flight crew. He or she is ultimately responsible for the safe operation of the airplane and thus has the final say in anything that goes on on board. And when I say anything, I mean literally everything and everyone. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned there can be two captains in one flight crew, remember? So who is the boss in that case? Well, the captain with the highest seniority will be designated as the commander. The first officer is basically the second in command and the second officer, the third pilot in command. 
Looking at specific duties of all crew members inside the flight deck, there is little to no difference between the actual tasks of a captain and first officer. Nowadays, it depends more on the pilot flying or pilot monitoring who does what instead of captain versus first officer. As many of you probably already know, a lot of accidents have happened in the past due to a steep cockpit gradient inside the flight deck. By a steep cockpit gradient, I mean a big difference in authority between the captain and the first officer. Things had to change and they did by incorporating CRM. CRM stands for Crew Research Management and it has become a big part of the current pilot training programs in the West. Unfortunately, there is still a very steep cockpit gradient present in some countries, which can lead to unsafe situations, incidents and accidents. In the end, it all comes down to being a safe and efficient team working together in a healthy environment in which all crew members have their own responsibility depending on the phase of flight. The first officer should be able to become a captain after obtaining the required experience and seniority level. After all, when airlines hire pilots, they assess whether or not this person is able to become a captain of an airline one day. This doesn't mean that every first officer becomes a captain though. Unfortunately, some will never pass the required training. The same goes for the second officer who is the third in command. So as you can see, there is a very clear hierarchy. If the captain becomes incapacitated for whatever reason, the first officer takes over his or her responsibilities. All pilots are trained and capable to do so. Last but not least, I didn't mention all the ranks in between, like junior first officer, senior first officer, and junior captain, because that would just create a lot of confusion since every airline has their own ideas about this subject. For example, some European low-cost airlines let their freshly trained first officers fly around with two stripes until they pass their second line check and have spent one year within the company. Another one I know of lets their first officers walk around with two stripes for even longer. So it all depends on the airline in the end. By now we should be able to answer the following question. Who is the real pilot? Well, the captain, first officer and second officer are all real pilots. They can all fly safely from A to B. I hope you guys learned something new in this video and if you cannot wait to learn more about the next topic or if you simply want to know more about my life then just click on the Patreon link below and in that way you can become part of the core people of the Dutch Pilot Girl community. Check out my Instagram for daily posts and stories about my aviation life and thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video guys. Bye bye!